Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me. This will be a rapid informational update on frog fruit and turf grass breeding programs. We'll first cover frog fruit, Fata notiflora, and I'm sure most people in this room know that uh, frog fruit's a native species to Florida, but it is native to many regions of the world. It has a cosmopolitan distribution, lots of different uses. There are four phyla species found in Florida, three are native, one is introduced. So what have we done so far in the frog fruit program? Uh, first and foremost, we made a germplasm collection and collected uh, native accessions from around the state, but also have a few from Texas, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Argentina. In 2021, in September of 21, we planted a replicated trial of 63 collected accessions. And you can see that there are many differences in this picture. There's differences for growth habits, flowering, uh, color of the plant, lots of different types of dis uh, differences. Now, what are we trying to do? We have a, a master student, Shay Hogan, and funded by a project from Clue, and she will be characterizing the collection for morphological variation, different leaf sizes, stolen links, internode diameters, flowering morphology. Uh, we're very interested to know if we can uh, seed frog fruit. So she's looking at germination percentages of each of the collected lines. She will also assess the, the genetic diversity of the collection using molecular markers. And she's evaluating the various combinations of frog fruit with white clover and bahia grass. And she's looking at a breeding population of 300 seedlings. Other things we wanna do, we wanna look at spreading rates and try to develop sod production practices for frog fruit. One of the fun things we've done is played around with colchicine to double the chromosome numbers. That stolen in the middle is a normal wild type frog fruit. The one on the right is an example of what we've accomplished with chromosome doubling. You see the remarkably different or bigger leaves. And this diminutive plant on the left is representative of the material that we have from Argentina, as is that low growing dense mat on the left. That's an Argentina accession next to a normal Florida accession. And one of the things I'm really interested in looking at is persistence or lack of persistence without mowing. This is a picture of June of 2023, and you see how good, what good cover we have. We left the plots unmowed throughout 23, and this is what we're currently looking at in April of 24. Without mowing or traffic, the plants don't seem to persist very well. And so I want to study this a little bit further. Switching over to turf, Citra Blue St. Augustine grass was commercialized in 2019. The high points here are excellent drought resistance, excellent shade tolerance, and good disease responses. We now have 900 acres in production, 90% of that in Florida. Citra Zoe Zoysia grass was commercialized in 2022. The high points for it, excellent sod strength, better winter color than other zoysia grasses, and to date, no issues with large patch, which is the principal disease in zoysia grass. And proud to, to state that the Sadler's Resort have announced that they will use Citrozoi in their future projects. We now up to 130 acres in production, probably will double in the next year. Another picture of Citrozoi. <laughs> St. Augustine grass and Bahia grass programs have recently, we've gotten some new funding from the sod growers in the St. Augustine program. We have 14 advanced lines. Focus there is drought, lethal viral necrosis, looking for a release in two to three years. Mohammed Kim, my PhD student, is overseeing the Bahia grass program. And he, of course, is focusing on improving the turf quality of Bahia grass. Some changes in seed head production, changes in tillering for density, and we want to increase or we want to develop herbicide resistance to increase the value for growers and looking at good old fashioned ethyl methane sulfonate induced mutations or the use of gene editing approaches to accomplish this. And this is a picture of Muhammad with hundreds of petri dishes, lots of callus growing, and he has callus growing in the presence of the herbicide glufosinate and that's the end. 